Hey, welcome to another Let's Dish the Dirt. It's good to see uh, so many of you here. We had an absolutely, you know, I wouldn't say perfectly beautiful day today, but our weather is starting to turn that corner and just trying to get everything that can be planted out, planted out. So I think today was a whole lot of onions went out. Um, I'm thinking we maybe planted five, six, seven, maybe seven varieties. So I've got a whole lot of onions now in the ground, which is wonderful. Oh, so good to see all of you here. Let me, hi, Mel and Robin, Margaret Alice. Good to see you. Jace, great to see you. Leanne, uh, I think I already said hi to Robin. I'm not sure. Yes, I did. But hi again, Robin. I don't mind doing that twice, right? Whoop. I don't know what I did there. Here's what I'm not going to do this week, though, is drop my uh, mouse. I am not going to repeat that little fiasco from last week. Although I did enjoy reading all your comments after I snuck out of the room. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Mags. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Stephen. We have two Stevens in the house tonight. Hello, Anna. Oh, thank you, Anna. Anna is saying she loved the uh, garden center shopping thing. Uh, we had so much fun. And I actually went back a week later. Got a few, I've got a few things I just had to have. Uh, yeah, it it's the coolest little thing. Hi, Claire. Amanda Jane, good to see you. No, we're just we're just getting started. Uh allotted chef, welcome. Rachel, welcome. Oh, this is lovely. Hello, Willow Grove. So glad you're here. Uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit today you know um if your greenhouse or your home or your you know however you're caring for your plants now uh all i know is i'm overrun with really large tomato plants really large pepper plants and anything that really can't go out for me maybe until mid-may you know, I want the nighttime temps to be at least 50, which I believe is 10 Celsius. Um, so they're everywhere, but I'm still trying to get my, some of my um, spring stuff out. So we are, we did a, a big day of, like I said, onion planting today, um, starting to harden off some of my flowers uh, that have done really well. Some did not, but I was able to pick them up at that fabulous garden center. Uh, Jace is asking if I have any money left after the, actually, you know, it's incredibly inexpensive there. However, I did go back, like I said, for a second trip, uh, which was incredibly fun. And we didn't bring the camera because there were so many things that we did there that I didn't put up on the camera. We were just, you know, we were just having fun. So anyway, so right now, I think it feels like there's this big uh, spring rush going on, right? Let's get everything in uh, that we can get in. But it also reminds me, and I think I was talking to Jason from Leeton. Uh, is it Leeton? No, it's Leeton, The Road to Self-Sufficiency, about uh, marrow peas. And because I want to try making some mushy peas because I've never had them. And uh, I said, you know, I'm going to grow them later if we end up liking them. So it reminded me that um, if you miss the spring window for something, most of us have a cooler fall season that we can try them again. So if it turns out that we like the whole mushy pea thing, I'm going to grow some marrow seeds, marrow peas uh, into the fall 
and then can enjoy those for the winter. So although I know we want to get everything out and we want to get going, don't forget that you do have, a, most of us do have that second chance fall season, which I find very kind of comforting right now because I don't know that we're going to get everything direct sown that I want to get sown. Uh, I have three enormous groups of plants that I'm hoping this coming week, uh, this next week, uh, we'll be able to get a lot of those in. But, you know, right now it's kind of where it's the, we're playing the game with the weather right now. And it look, we look clear. I think, I think we've had our last freeze and I don't think the nighttime temps are going below, uh, 40. I think we're kind of going to head mid mid forties, which I think is like single digits in the Celsius world. Uh, so I'm very happy about that. Yes, I understand the mushy peas are best served with fish and chips. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to, I'm going to try to do the whole thing, but um, Jace, Jason um, shared a, a recipe on his channel. And I thought, well, I bought a UK version of marrow peas, and I'm going to try uh, the recipe that he suggested so that we might get the actual flavor of how they might be in the UK. So uh, are you guys feeling kind of the, the spring, time to get it in, time to get it going? I mean, I'm almost a little overwhelmed. And part of it is probably because I brought eight new flats <laughs> to be cared for from my gardening uh, adventures. So, uh yeah, that might be why I'm feeling a little bit of it. Because I had plenty already here. Um, okay, let's. Okay, we've got some questions about peas. Pie, pie mash and liquor. Okay. Probably won't, wouldn't taste bad. Uh, pork pies. Now, when I was growing up, I, I, I think a lot of you know this, my parents were Scottish nationals. So I essentially grew up in a Scottish home in the US. And we had something that was called a meat pie that we used to go to the Scotch, Scottish butcher, because I guess American meat pies were nothing like that. Uh, and we'd get Scottish meat pies and black pudding but i think it was pudding because i know pudding is like dessert in the uk and this definitely was not dessert it was uh i think over here we call it blood sausage uh but that was kind of what i grew so i don't know if that was a pork pie or if that was they just call them meat pies and i was probably young enough not to split that hair. So I, I don't know, but, uh, yeah, I never had mushy peas, mushy peas, sorry, not mushy, mushy. I never had mushy peas growing up though. Uh, let's see. Okay. There is a lot of love fish and chips and mushy peas. Okay. So I'm going to give it a try. Uh, Oh, Quiet Space Arts is saying up here in Orkney, still get frost till end of my mid-June. Wow. Okay, that's that's hard. So you're really playing the waiting game right now. Uh, Amanda says everything. Oh, you've already got everything in. Everything here which is going out is out except squash. That is nice. Uh wow congratulations 
yeah, I wish I could, I wish I could share that. Uh, we had actually had snow and hail on May 1st. So, but I think, I really do think we're past it all. Uh, Francis is saying morning all our hummingbirds have arrived. Oh, hummingbirds are just the best. Yeah, mine aren't here yet. Uh, they'll be showing up as soon as there are a few more. The only uh, pollinating things that I have outside right now, I believe, are dandelions. <laughs> and I don't think they're, once my bigger flowers get out there, I, I see a whole lot more hummingbirds. Oh, nice. Oh, this is um, Mama's Oasis is asking, what are my planting now for winter or for next year? Well, um, I have got, I've been given some perennial, I think it's perennial cabbage or tree cabbage and tree kale that might uh, winter over. I'm not sure. So those I am um, sowing this weekend. Uh and really, we don't have, we're so cold here that we don't really have a lot of vegetative stuff that's going to make it uh, through the year. Um, I think I am going to try overwintering some onions this year. I saw that uh, one of the varieties that I grow can be planted in the fall and should overwinter in my area, which I guess will produce a much sweeter sweeter onion and we'll get an earlier harvest. So I sure will take that. Uh, Storn away black pudding is the best. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it, I just know it came in a circle, like a big circle, and it was really dark. And yeah, that's what I remember. Uh, okay. Well, hi, Nancy from Iowa. Good to have you. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, itchy fingers and want to plant out. Got seedlings in my hydroponic tent. Now, hydroponics are another thing I really haven't uh, delved into. Although, if you saw in my last, I don't know, it wasn't my last video. It was when I went back to blocks garden center that I decided it was time to throw my, my, my toe in the dahlia uh, pool. So I bought five dahlias and I thought that was enough to maybe start managing. <laughs> uh, I don't know how many I will end up with, but uh a Scottish meat pie is essentially ground beef and spices in Greece. Pork pies, pork spices in a gel. Oh, okay. That's a good, so I'm quite sure we had the Scottish meat pies. Uh, yeah, and I was always amazed. Like we don't, but I, you know, maybe it's just the time. Because I know we don't, we don't, I don't cook in that much um, oil or fat. But I remember as a kid, that was like, that was like the thing. And when we'd visit Scotland and see our relatives, there was a whole lot of fat being used. It was kind of interesting. Just the, it was just different. Uh, Amanda's saying she's a bit in a protected pocket. Let's see. She's been collecting dandelion heads all week for tea. Yeah. I remember I was talking to uh, Shelmar just today and, we were remembering when we were little, we could like rub them under our chin or our nose and uh, turn it yellow. But yeah, I, I, I honestly have just kind of thought, well, why don't we grow some dandelions for tea? I'm doing a tea garden this year. That's a new kind of specific thing I want to uh, get done. I'm collecting all the pieces either by growing the herbs or picking them up. Uh, but I'd like to really have a really good um, tea garden. Uh, I find as I get a little older, um, herbal teas just agree with me nicer. 
particularly if I drink it um, in the evening. So, so I have about, I think I have about 30 herbs that I want to get growing. So I think I'm going to do it in one of those uh, vertical uh, planters that I have so that each different herb can maybe get a pocket all their own. And that will also help me um, keep things like lemon verbena or my mints a little more like they can't go everywhere, right? They're so invasive. So I thought this might help keep that a little more under control. Yes. Uh, question, could you fleece or do the cold frame tops you talked about? Yes. Uh, my husband has been a bit busy uh, at this time of year. So I think that's going to be a summer project. So maybe going into the fall, I can have a few cold frames that fit on top of the beds nearest the house. Because once the snow comes in, it's a challenge to get uh, to the back garden. But if I could just fill those two uh, and keep them, you know, extend this the uh, season just a little bit, I think that would be wonderful. And he loves to build things. So I'm like, okay, uh, please, here's two things that would be really helpful. Uh, let's see here. This is a question from Robin. Can I direct some of my burlato beans? Uh, day temps are 70 and night temps as low as 47. Uh, I sure, I sure think you could 47 to, in my world's close enough to 50. Uh, you know, you're not in low forties. So I would think if you're and, and your evening temps are going up, I would really check your soil temperature. Uh, that's what's going to help get that bean going. And my guess is if you're seventies during the day and 47 at night, I'm guessing that your, your soil temp is going to be much warmer than your nighttime temp. So I think, I think you'd be pretty good. So I'd give it a shot. I don't know if I'd plant all of them. Well, you know what? I usually do. I kind of go all in. So I would say you probably have a great shot. Uh, okay. We all need to know what honey substitute out of the dandelion. Huh. That's interesting. And I bet people who uh, enjoy a vegan diet would love to have a honey substitute that's not, you know, plant or not uh, animal based. Um, Audrey, have you made Ivan Chai from fireweed? <laughs> no, I have not. Uh, so should I have fireweed in my uh, tea garden? That's what I'm seeing. Yeah. I will make a note of that. Thank you. Oh, yeah. If you have stone raised beds, that's going to just lock the heat in. So, yeah, I think you'll be more than fine. Uh, Google's got the recipe. I tried once, but couldn't collect enough. Well, okay. So is, is the recipe for the honey substitute made out of dandelion tops or is, uh, or is that the firefly? Don't let fireweed in. Okay. Okay. I, you know what? I respect not uh, having things that self seed or take over. So maybe next, well, next time I'm in Scotland or I'm in the UK, I'll just look you up, Claire, and we'll have a cup. How's that? We're uh, we're thinking about maybe taking a trip over these next couple years. So it's been a long time since I've been there, and I think. I think I would just like to do plot tours the whole time. Uh, they'll get us all over different cities and 
meet some people and hang out for a minute. Okay, fireweed is amazing. It's all edible, but I only keep one. Okay. Yeah, and that, you know, Stephen, that's a really good point uh, to plant the beans because, you know, that's, that's kind of how I, what I do with um, lettuce in the spring. I plant it and I let, I let it decide, okay, it's time for me to um, grow. So they'll wait for their best conditions, which I think is wonderful. Uh, okay, here's the, you've got to partly dry, wilt the leaves for the chai, then bash them up, roll them and ferment them for a week. Okay, and then dry out. Okay, so it's like a, uh, it's so it's slightly fermented as well. I bet that would taste very good. Um, yeah, so I I I'll let you know if uh, we're planning to do that. We're we're thinking maybe of taking the family. Um, the kids and spouses and their, my grandchildren to New York this Christmas. We're thinking about that. Uh, I just always thought that would be really fun to see the big tree at Rockefeller Center and, you know, all of that. Um, so if we do that, I'm not sure we would do the UK the next summer, um, but we just might. So, okay, what was I going to check? Oh, the care for seedlings, too. Um, my seedlings seem to be doing really well. They're hanging on. Um, but it's, e it's so easy right now to kind of forget how much care they really still need. They're still, uh, they're still in, you know, smaller... We've doing, I've been doing potting up, potting up, potting up. But then at some point you have to go, okay, in two weeks I'll be able to plant this outdoors. So I need to shift from potting up um, to hardening them off and getting them ready to go in. So again, I think we're in that, I mean, it's a full court press right now, don't you think? We're just, we're in the heat of it. And so you kind of, I mean, my tomatoes, in all honesty, really need to be potted on. But I'm thinking in two weeks, they're going to be outside. And I'm not sure how much of a root system they're going to develop in two weeks. So I might just chance it. We'll see. I change my mind a lot when I see what they're doing. Oh, Mags has lost some seedlings uh, to damping off. Oh. You know, uh, I for me, it's always if I uh, keep the dome on them too long, you know, a humidity dome over the top, they just, they, they kind of sit in that steamy environment, which they also kind of love um, to grow on with anyway. But sometimes depending on the seedling, it does kind of, um, it wants to just dampen off. And that's, that's it's hard for me when they do that because you know I try to plan my sowing my seeds like at a time I kind of have an inner time frame that I know this needs to go in now this needs to go in next and when I lose something I always think ah uh, oh well well I hope that you can reseed those mags and give them another shot. Uh, let's see. Oh, we have a question here from uh, Marjorie. Hi, Marjorie. Uh, I brought a, I bought a small apple tree and pear tree. Already have black, blackberry bush in a container. Uh, when transplant, do you put something in? Uh, I would put. I mean, do what you like put a fertilizer in with them. I usually would put in 
Uh, I use an organic like starter fertilizer. It's uh, it's from the company Espoma. It's called Biotone. Uh, and it kind of helps them get off to a good start, helps them start developing a root system, has mycorrhizal fungi in it. It's very nice. Um, I might look, because I know, Marjorie, you're not here in the States. Uh, I might look for a nice, and I'd say organic, because you're going to eat the apples, you're going to eat the tree, the pears, and you're going to eat the blackberries. Uh, just like a slow release uh, all-purpose fertilizer. And because you're trying to produce uh, fruit, and I always get this one wrong, I think you 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 won't uh, mind a little more phosphorus in it. It's either potash or phosphorus that you need. And I'll have to look that up. I always get them confused. So that it will push uh, fruit. But maybe if you're these are new, bushes you might not want to push too much fruit this year you might just want to work on the root system and getting it settled in so i would say just a good all-purpose um organic fertilizer like slow release i think that'd be wonderful uh now i guess I'm get I would assume blood fish and bone is kind of a general cuz I think they're trying to get, you know, the nitrogen NPK in a balanced uh, that's what I think blood fish and bone would offer and I think that would be great for the roots. Um I I would I think that might be your best and if anybody in the chat from the UK can respond to that uh, that would be great because that is not something that we have here at least not uh, at least not under that name okay let me we've got a lot of oh here I'll hide this one for you uh Okay, this is quiet space. Come on, there we go. Uh, best ones I looked up for hydroponics, tent and YouTubers, keep on growing with Mike Van Dus, and also Hucho. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to really delve into the whole hydroponic thing, uh, but I always find it pretty interesting. Uh, okay. Yeah, good. No, that's wonderful, Marjorie. That's, that's going to be a nice little selection of fruit. Yes. Okay. And the last kind of thing I wanted to touch on was although we're in this you know hell for leather springtime uh it's don't forget to like succession sow which is hard to you almost always need to be thinking six weeks out six seven weeks oh excuse me <clears throat> wow uh you almost need to be um thinking six or seven weeks out on like, what is it that I really want to get planted um, next? Even though we're in the midst of, we got to get this going or we got to get this in. You always kind of want to have plants hovering in the background. Uh, so that when you get a space that becomes available, you already have some plant starts that are ready to go in. Awesome. Jason, um, I've been sowing stuff today to go where the early spuds will come out. Exactly. Like you got to be thinking down the road a little bit. Okay, what's next? What's next? 
doesn't mean you have to, um, I guess this is for if you want a really, really productive garden. Uh, you've got to be thinking, uh, what is next? And I know Jason uh, is all about becoming self-sufficient. So he has to really be thinking next, 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 next. Uh, but I do it just because I find it kind of a little bit challenging. And um, I like that. So come mid-August, when it's been hot for a long time, you get that. Uh, you know, there's a weird, there sometimes can be a, just a, a wall that you need to get through uh, if you're gardening like through the whole season and being very productive. And I find that uh, successionally sowing, being able to plant new things, watch new things grow, gets me through that hump and allows me to just continue enjoying the garden. Sharon has a question. Can I direct sow cucumber in the polytunnel or is it too early? Uh, still nighttime temps around nine to 11. I would imagine in your polytunnel, if your nighttime temps are nine or 11, I think you'd be fine because you. I'm sure it's much warmer in there, uh, particularly during the day. Uh, I would take that. I would take that risk. And I don't know if you have any tender things out there yet, but yeah, nighttime temps of like ten. I I would put those out because I direct so mine, so I would sure do that too. Uh, oh, that's a good, that is a good, uh, this is Amanda. She's saying when I, I, t what I tend to do is when I plant something out, I will sow it again just in case. Okay. And then you also have backups that you can plant again. Like sometimes, and I'm not a huge zucchini, uh, fan i just or courgettes um i they don't they don't taste like anything to me but we will lose um some of those by mid-season they'll give way to uh uh what am i trying to think of anyway the leaves will uh what oh my goodness that's a that's amazing can't even think of that uh, but they will many times give way to disease and be done. So even a courgette is nice to have a backup. Um, so again, if you were to sow the one that, or to plant the one that you had sown and then plant another one, sometimes uh, that will allow you to keep the season going a little bit longer, but using uh, an entirely different plant to do it. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're looking for, uh, oh, I meant to tell Claire, I need to tell you, uh, my Abe Lincoln, I just potted up and it's looking great. And thank you for that. I've never grown in Abe Lincoln, which I feel like, gosh, as a U.S. person, I probably should have done that, but uh, okay, here we go. And I've been doing a every three week uh, successional sewing just to try to get, um, I want to be much more uh, focused on getting a, a nice succession and not everything all at once, unless like an onion where I'm fine getting those all at once because uh, they're just a good good uh, produce product just to have. Uh, now my spring onions, obviously I'll succession sow those. Um, okay, I was thinking about something. Oh my gosh, my mind is is moving a little bit uh, slowly today. Okay, this is a question. 
What is your strangest flower and veg you have ever grown? Well, the strangest flower actually I'm growing this year. It's called, the variety name is called Oscar. The common name is called Hairy Balls. And I really am kind of just doing this for Potty Mouth Garden Club because it just seems like an appropriate thing uh, to grow for that. But there are these really uh, very interesting, they, they grow very tall and they produce like balloon, balloon like uh, pods that actually have uh, hair follicles or I should, they, they're not really hair follicles. They're just these little things that come out of it. So that's why it got the, I guess the everyday name. Uh, but you can dry them and or even use them fresh in flower arrangements and they're they're quite beautiful. Um, yeah, thank you. I thought that did sound appropriate for potty mouth. And uh, okay, what is the strangest flower? What was the strangest veg I've ever grown? Uh, And I'm a, I'm a, a sucker for growing something unusual. Uh, I'm gonna have to think about that for a minute. Uh, I thought they were the trombone chinos, maybe just because of the way they they grow, but it, that really wasn't the strangest by far. I grew black pumpkins last year. That was I've never done those before, uh, and those were quite stunning and growing them again this year just because they were beautiful uh mag sure having a rough time this year wait a minute i need to scoot back up to there to that do you think it's because you're in your new growing space uh mags is saying uh first lot of carrots i planted germinated really well no sign of second or third lot coming up. Yep. Parsnips are a no show too. Yeah. I wonder if this is because you've moved into your new space and I, I don't know. And that, that's just disheartening. I know. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm scared to ask what that is. Uh, <laughs> sounds like another i it just sounds like another potty mouth uh appropriate rubius cockburnianus okay that is yeah i'm not even gonna i i said it i'm sorry i said it because i could see how you could really pronounce it uh much better uh yeah so Okay, so uh, yeah, we're back to succession. Like, just don't forget. Because once they're in, <laughs> okay, Claire, you're forgiven, sort of. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to plant out uh, some carrots on seed tape, which I've never done. Uh, it does sound like a trip to the clinic. Thank you. That's a good. That's a good. Um, that's a good word. Uh, I'm trying to. I'm going to plant them out on seed tape, which I've never tried, uh, and just see how they do. If they do differently, but I usually when I plant my or when I sow my carrots, uh, I usually cover them with like a plank of wood and check every couple days to see if anything's coming up. It seems to help keep them much. Uh, damper. Is that a word? Much more damp, much more, yeah, much more damp. And I also, when I sow my carrots, I do the, the little drill and then I cover them outside with, um, it's not perlite. I, I feel like my brain is like not snapping today. Uh, yeah, not perlite vermiculite i do with a really fine vermiculite and uh that seems to 
And then I just keep it moist, moist, moist till I see those little green tops coming up. And if you check your the wood that you put over the top every couple of days, they'll be fine even if you miss it by a day because they'll just color up real quick, real quickly. Uh, <laughs> okay. So I, I'm assuming uh, I've seen people make their own seed tape. It looks a little fussy, but I found some and I thought, I'll give it a try. And, uh, but I do think if you um, are, and I do that with lettuce too. When I plant lettuce outside, when I direct sow it, I don't cover it up with soil. I cover it up with vermiculite. And that seems to uh, help the germination or help those little teeny plants just get out of there quickly. And I have seen that, Amanda, where uh, people mix it with, is it a weak wallpaper paste? I think it's like, is it cornstarch and water, like a little slurry that you uh, make up and then put it all, you squirt it all out together. And it seems to, it seems to do, um, they're, they love it. I've never tried that. Um, yes, that's the, that's the video I saw, Claire. Um, Oh, awesome, Pauline. Are you entering the potty mouth parsnip growing challenge? Mine aren't in yet. Because uh, I wanted to pre, I wanted to sort of chit them, so to speak. And because I've heard that um, it's so, they're just like not a very, they're not re really reliable um, germinators. Um, but then I heard that was not allowed. So I thought, well, I will sow a bunch. Some of them I'm going to um, chit and some of them not. I just won't enter the pre-chitted ones into the completely no prize winning uh I guess it's 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 bragging rights. Maybe that's what you get if you win. Um, let's see. <laughs> well, I um, I'm I'm really trying it because uh, Tony Smith swears by it and I thought I'll give it I was going to plant it next to the way I normally plant and see uh what gives the bigger uh bang for my buck I'm pretty sure uh regular germinate you know the regular way to germinate is the way to go okay Stephen is saying the last time I used a board over my carrots I found I had a mouse that dug under the board and ate all my seeds. Well, that is, um, wow, that's quite a strong mouse. Well, I guess they, yeah, they probably are. But yeah, that would, that would kind of, I would kind of go, really? You needed to do that. Can't you see? I'm trying to keep them, uh, trying to protect my seeds from the likes of you. What's the next thing I'll be doing in the garden? Well, I'm due to plant another succession sowing. And I feel like I'm getting, I, I'm on the fourth one. And I think I'm, uh, one was a week behind and this one will be a week behind. Um, I'm also hardening off my flowers right now. There's a couple of them out on the deck today. Um, I had great success growing uh, wave petunias, uh, impatiens, dusty miller, and geraniums from seed this year. I mean, blew it. Uh, they're they're gorgeous. They look like 
something that you would pick up at a nursery. I mean, they're, they're, they're strong. They're, they're tight. They're not, you're not leggy at all. I mean, they're just beautiful. So I'm starting to uh, harden those off so I can get them out. Uh, I need to get potatoes in uh, because they're sitting and they're becoming horribly uh, chitted, which I, I thought I'd have more time because uh, they don't usually get to me until almost the end of April. I've had them for like at least a month now. So those will be getting out um, hopefully in this next week. And uh, I just started a flat of zinnias to go out. And then it'll be pretty much starting to plant. Uh, I want to get another round of peas in. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to sow those directly. Uh, it's time to get beans in, uh, get some sunflowers in. So, uh, and, and carrots. I don't have carrots sown yet. So I need to, there's a lot of those kinds of things that's kind of next for me. Uh, because once you get, you know, once you get one row or two rows of what you need in, kind of just seems to, you know, you, I, I get happy that certain things that I wanted to do are actually getting done. So that's kind of what I'm up to. Uh, yeah, and my parsnips need to go in. Uh, this coming week as well, because I can't grow them as long as many people in the UK can, because, you know, we, we don't have such a, we don't have as mild a winter, even though I know you guys kind of got hit, uh, last year a bit. Uh, <laughs> Stephen, you have a, a very unique sense of humor. Uh, you might want to hold up like a, I don't know, something metal as well. Uh, that's funny. Our other Stephen has his parsnips in and they're coming through. Awesome. Uh, uh, let's go here. Uh, yeah, we have we have some competitors here about these parsnips. Um, and I won't pretend that I'm not competitive either. I think that's why I wanted to chit them. But I think I'm just going to plant the whole packet because apparently you can't keep them from season to season. They don't the seeds do not store well. So I'm just going to plant all of them and let the chips fall where they may. I'm just hoping I have enough room. Because like I said, I went and got a whole bunch more uh flats from that beautiful gardening center oh okay when do you i start my petunias and geraniums i've never had luck with either okay um i will need to check i'm gonna just very quickly check check my website because I have every date of everything I've ever started right there. So we will look. Uh, where are we? I have, I've got you guys uh, kind of minimized. I think I'll just open you up again because I hate staring at my face the whole time I'm doing this. So I found that if I make the screen a little smaller, I don't have to do that. But I could probably share this screen with you as we discover the day that they got planted. Um, I think I will. Uh, how do I do that? Wait, wait, I know it's right here. Share screen. Real food comes dirty. Share. Oh, I'm so glad it came up. Awesome. So... I think they were they were sown a minute ago because uh, I, I grew a lot of them I bet they were sown right right around here nope a little sooner probably could search for this but oh that would be just too easy 
Uh, so if you ever want to be nosy and see what I'm doing, you can go to my website and it shows you everything I've started. And here we go. Uh, they were sewn at the end of February. And they are doing so nicely. Here, I think I can stop sharing now. Yeah, so end of February. And they're doing beautiful. And the impatiens are just starting to flower like the little buds. Um, have come up and I can't wait to see them. I have a really hot orange and a hot pink because I just love those two colors together. And I did the same with the geraniums. So I'm hoping to have a nice display. Uh, oh, this is a sad tale. How's your cucumbers? I've done the Jesse specials and they are okay. Mine uh, grew up to be about, I'll say three inches high. And all they did was put out a whole lot of, blo of flowers. Um, and I think for some reason, they must have been feeling very stressed uh, because there was no way. Uh, so I, I thank them for coming and I put them uh, in the recycling. Uh, I'm going to start ones outside probably mid-May, mid mid the third week in May. Uh, but yeah, those that was not a successful successful growing thing for me at all. Uh, Robin's asking, has everyone anyone done wax begonias? Uh, I have, but I've never grown them from seed. So I, I would not be able to, two months old and a half. Now, if you grow snapdragons, that shouldn't be a huge surprise because they just, they take forever. So I ended up uh, buying some flats because I'm thinking they're, they'll not, they're not come to much in the growing season. Uh, Oh, Rachel got, that's kind of interesting, parsnip seed tape. Uh, next day off, I'll put them in. Okay. Yeah, I did carrots in toilet rolls last year because I was, I just was giving it a shot. And they did great. They really did great. Uh. Claire is sure she's going to win the parsnip challenge. I think I saw Jason say that as well. Uh, we shall see because mine are going in this week. Uh, let's see. Any other? Uh, Okay, so what is this next week bringing uh, to everybody? What's uh, what's high on the list for you all? Uh, your snaps are three to four inches. I uh, mine did not. I think I actually got. I planted amazing amount of varieties. Uh, I maybe have eight that look like they're going to do anything of, you know, so I'm so glad that I bought two flats and, uh, and they're mixed. I'm not a fan of mixed flats. Um, uh, however, I figured I'd wait long enough for them to bloom and then I could maybe pick out, uh, both, you know, match them up so they could be planted more. And I like a big group of like one color. I think it's, um, I think it makes more of a statement and that's kind of what I want to do with flowers. So yeah. So Steven's got lots and lots, uh, of plotting on and pricking out. Yep. 
or I think that was potting on, or maybe you're putting them on your plot so it can go either way. Uh, yes. Yeah. I, I really, you know, I'm, I'm debating, uh, about potting up my tomatoes, but I really think if I want good tomatoes, I should bite the bullet and do it because they'll, they'll catch up. It's not like a week is going to make a huge difference in a tomato harvest, particularly with my beautiful, uh, my beautiful uh, grafted ones. Can't wait to see. And we're going to put those right next to the uh, ones that weren't grafted and see how we do. Planting up a grease stalk and planting brassicas in it. I'm doing that with one of mine as well, Nancy, uh, because I want to, I want to beat the white cabbage butterfly. And I bought one of those insect uh, covers that goes over the green stock. And I'm like, you know what, guys, I am, you are not going to win this year, if at all possible. Uh, yeah, it seems like everybody's got a lot of plant. I mean, that just feels like the time of year, isn't it? Oh, sweet peas are out. Beautiful. Oh, lovely. Angela's sowing carrots, beans, more lettuces, repotting tomatoes. Uh, yes. Uh, that's where we are, right? Uh, I killed my... Uh, I killed my... I saw somebody has their sweet peas. Oh, Claire, you've got yours. Oh, you're so good. I killed mine. So I think I might try re because I even have a structure that I want to grow them up. So I may just pop them in and let them, you know, let them germinate outside and see what we get. Uh, yeah. And it was user error. I did not water them sufficiently and they were outside for a day. Uh, yeah, it was unfortunate. Uh, yeah, I think it's worth a try. I'm going to, I'm going to try planting them and see what we get. If not, I'll grow beans up the trellis. Uh, I've made like two pure, well, teepees, very tall and skinny, and I just wanted them to be covered with flowers. But if not, I'll grow up, I'll, I'll grow some beans up it that also flower. Lovely. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll change. We will change strategy as we need to, right? Uh, let's see. Amanda Jane is saying, I've done far too much lamb's lettuce, but the hens like it. So they're allowed a little. It doesn't seem to affect them like ordinary lettuce. Okay, I've never, never grown uh, birds. Although I think our city, which has a lot of ordinances and whatnot, said it was okay, and then two weeks later said it wasn't. So I wonder what people do who already purchased them, right? Uh, maybe there's a grand, they can be grandfathered for that week or they have to go find a rehoming. <laughs> uh, and maybe if for those of you that grow uh, fruit, has anyone grown apples near a north facing wall? I want to put one in my new wildlife area and I don't want to kill it. It's in a big pot at the moment. So if anybody has any advice there, I do not have any fruit bearing trees. Um, so I probably, I'd rather not say much about that. Um, so if any of you have done that or have any advice, uh, please feel free to pop it in.
Well, thank you for joining us, Quiet Space. We're about ready to wrap things up. I can't believe it's been an hour. This just just goes so fast. Uh, and I really didn't have like a like one single topic for tonight because I again was out in the garden since eight thirty. It's now three o'clock, so I got I was back in here at like one thirty to at least try to pull it together. Um, but yeah, my mind was, you know, my mind is like in the, there's just a lot to do right now. So remember, as you feel that out there, and I had to do that to myself here today, if I don't get it in right now, I can plant it again in the fall. And we'll just, we'll just use the coolness of the end of the season to our advantage. So once again, thank you so much for being here. I enjoy chatting with all of you so much and uh same time same place next week perhaps we'll all feel a little uh better about where we're finding ourselves uh yeah no it's great so and again love your garden we talked about loving our pollinators last week and um be kind to yourself if you don't get it all in you know it'll be okay and we'll 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 try again later or next time, right? Okay, you all take care and we'll see you soon. Bye.